Welcome, everybody, to Face the Facts. It's good to have you here all once again. I am Nick Face. We are getting ready for Super Bowl Sunday between the Bucks and the Chiefs this upcoming weekend. And we'll go over some of our predictions and thoughts and what we think the game will look like and all and some MVP choices. Maybe they'll, we'll actually uh, select who the MVP will be. That'll be pretty cool. Um, I'm also going to be talking about uh, the Bruins. Uh, the Bruins are absolutely surging right now. They are the best team in hockey. I don't care. There is no, there's no other team. There's no other team. There's no comparison. There's no debate. There's no nothing. So this team is unreal right now. Unreal. And I am, uh, I should have the last laugh right now after how I was super critical of them before the season started. So I will take my blame pie a hundred percent. And then Phil, I don't know if Tatum's giving you the finger or not, but I might think I'm going to give him the finger and the rest of the team because I've just about had it with the Celtics right now. Um, and we have opening day. Apparently, uh, b- baseball will be uh, getting ready for spring training, and opening day will be right on time. Looks like we'll have a 162-game season, and that is uh, something that we can t- to discuss about too. But let's go with the Super Bowl first. I think it's neat that um, – we still have Tom Brady there in the Super Bowl and all. It's uh, it's fun to, even though he's not a Patriot, it's fun to root for him and fun to watch at least. I'm rooting for him. I hope he gets the job done. But I'd like to hear your guys' take. I mean, what are you guys feeling towards the Super Bowl? Um, well, like I said last week, uh, you know, it would be sacrilegious of me as a Patriots fan to root for the Chiefs. <laughs> so, I mean, it would be. I mean, there are a lot of people that are just not rooting for Brady and don't want anything to do with anything uh, anything Brady, and it has to do with him not being a Patriot. I get it to an extent, but this wasn't Brady. I mean, the Patriots didn't want him back. What else was he going to do? Could have retired, but obviously he still wants to play. Listen, he could have swallowed his pride and not been – and treated like a subhumanoid, just like everyone else. Yep. Just like, just hey, treat me like a, a, a Morlock. Yep. And he should have liked it. He should have loved it. Yep. But uh, no, yeah, I don't know. I still have a buddy who who has a weird. Well, actually, no, he doesn't. It's not a weird one. Like I get his point. Like last year, he's like Brady kind of dogged it, which he did. You can't really argue that he kind of dogged it. Uh, I'm not, I'm, it's not even Brady to tell you the truth, Phil. I mean, it was Gronk. Let's be honest. Oh, here. last year. Well, I mean, but they've done. But they've gone to and won the Super Bowl without him, without they Gronk. Uh, but I mean, do you think? I guess my whole point is. Like, I understand someone who's like, yeah, he kind of dogged it, then he kind of flew the coop. But, uh, like, you're kind of panning it. He stuck it to Bill. In my opinion, he stuck it to Bill. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, not coming out of retirement. There's a bigger picture, yeah. Well, not just Gronk. I mean, Brady, there's a bigger picture where, you know, even if you say or make the argument that Brady dogged it last year, which he did to varying degrees, uh, you can still say, yeah, but the overall picture was, you know, they could have picked up his option years ago. They didn't do it after he came back from – like the, we're four years removed from the greatest comeback ever in uh, Super Bowl history. Uh, we talked and, about that in my uh, my class that I had yesterday. Oh, there, it was there like, you go. I can't believe it's been four years. It's crazy, right? It feels um, like yesterday. Feels, well, it doesn't feel like four, but it definitely, <laughs> well, I guess maybe everything is, yeah, relative at this point. But yeah, no, so, you know, you don't extend his, you don't give him, you give him a year to year after that. It's like, well, I mean, I get it. He's older, but write him out i was actually and you know what i'm glad i'm glad he's gone because now it forces you to start over i know I mean, that you have to start stupid, over but, anyways you were yeah. delaying the inevitable if you kept him here but i i'm still i'm still in the camp where i i, st- I still feel they should have give brady whatever he wanted on that it's the greatest quarterback level live i mean let's let's be honest here there's write exceptions out, yeah. for people that's like him there are exceptions and yeah. to not in a way bow down to his greatness i get it to an extent but he should get whatever he wants. Look what he's done in his career. And when you put those two egos together, Belichick and Brady, Belichick got the, got, got the final say and the final word. And Brady had wanted nothing to do with it. I don't blame him at all. I don't. No, yeah, I'm with you. And also, I do have to say, you technically, you don't get the last laugh about the Bruins thing. That's actually reserved for Tom. Because Tom was a man who believed... The people who believe in the situation get the last laugh, not the detractors. But I understood what you were saying. Well, like, and humble pie. No, you no, were right I'm about kidding. humble pie. <laughs> no, you're Sorry. right. 
You're right. You're right. Uh, I'm getting. Uh, I'm. I'm so happy with what I'm seeing right now. Those that are giving up, I'll be honest to you. That Wednesday, Wednesday night, I'll raise my hand. I walked out of my room. I pouted. I said, "This sucks." Ba 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 ba. Turned it off, and then my phone erupted. Did you see that comeback? Oh my God, this team is great. Ba ba ba. I'm like, what? What did I just do? I'm not doing it again. This team is worth the price of admission. This team is worth sitting down. This team is worth investing in. This team is worth watching on a nightly basis. I didn't realize how much of an impact David Pasternak has on this team. They are a completely different team with him and without him. What did, right, I, what did I say? What did I say? It's not about before, Bergeron. It's not about yeah, what. What did Tom and I say? Before That's the right. Yeah. Before the season started, I said this team is going to look a lot different when Pasternak comes back. Am I not wrong to think that him coming back from the hip surgery would impact a little bit of his play? I I mean the first game he definitely seemed a little sluggish, but I don't I don't think he slowed down at all since then. I just I, I was I really kind of broke down how each game has been with Poster in the lineup and. Five goals how in three sync, games. How in sync, not the band, how just in sync they are with one another. Poston knows where Bergeron is going to be. Marchand knows where each guy is going to be. And same goes with Bergeron. He knows where, the, he knows where his teammates are going to be. That's why it's the best line in hockey. It still is. But I think this year what makes it a little different is the balance. The second line is doing their job. They are playing effectively. So that pressure that's always been on that first line to deliver, I don't think it's there as much. I think it's a lot more loose. I think it's a lot more crisp. And they're jiving well together. Third and fourth line as well, too. I mean, to, to say what you want, I mean, Corrali had a heck of a game uh, the past Wednesday. He had a breakaway chance. He had a great shot on that. I mean, you got to credit the goalie from Philly Hart to making a great save on him. So, they're playing very good hockey right now. I just want that to continue. And here's what I'm a little, I'm, I always have that little concern in me. They play again, uh, the Flyers on Friday night. Then they have two games off because Buffalo is in COVID protocol. So that concerns me a bit because I would so much rather have them continue to play than sit for what, four or five days, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And and just kind of lose that momentum and lose that push that they've had. So I don't know if you're concerned about that, Tom. Um, yes and no. I think I think they could use the break. I think it'll be nice because now they have that extra those extra two days to even like practice and stuff. And then uh, I mean it's gonna save them up for when they're gonna have to play whenever they're going to have to play Buffalo, which will most likely be at the end of the season. So it's going to be crammed at the end of the season. That's, that's how so I think, I think at the same, I mean, but then on the other side where I think I, where I am concerned is that, you know, they have a long break and we've seen what they've done with a long break, but I also believe, I mean, this, this team is basically on comebacks right now. Yep. Uh, it, it's, it's a little nerve wracking, but, I mean, they, they ride, they ride the comeback. So is this team better without Chara? I think they're faster. Okay. Um, I think. Cause I personally don't think they missed it. That he's missed right now. I don't think they miss him, but I, I think that, I mean, I've said that the, the defense is, you know, the second all-star on the team, but it could also be better. So defense-wise, I think that they've actually been the most pleasant surprise so far this year. I didn't expect the defense to be playing as well as they would be without Tory Krug, without uh, Chara on, on, on a pair of their uh, for, for, for our defense. I think the production you've gotten so far from Kevin Miller has been outstanding. I think McAvoy has started to get his uh, rhythm together. I like his... I'm seeing a lot more speed and physicality out of McAvoy right now, especially in the past week. So that's what I like. Um, 
Yaka, whatever his name is, Yaka Heinen or something like that, whatever his name. That's Zach the one, That's the one that I'm a little I'm concerned with still. I think he has a lot of growing to do. Um, and he's kind of taken in a way that Chara spot. Yeah, I mean. And then Grizzly's uh, been very solid. They're, they're definitely they're definitely rotating in the offensive zone more often too, which is which is always you know which is a good part of the game to get your defense down in the offense and rotate your forwards back and all that. Yeah. Um, and was it two games ago when Cassie rolled out five forwards on on the power play? Yep. Um, that was a great decision. That was great. That was awesome. I loved it. Yeah, because Grizz, Grizzly had ended up getting knocked out of the game. Yep. Um, and they ended up scoring five unanswered goals against the Capitals to win five to three. That's just insane. Um, I think that's where it started, like, for me. I, 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 I even think the game that they lost on Saturday against the Capitals, it could have been anybody's game. I mean, they were able to tie it and get to overtime. I was happy, but they just got the point. And, and drive it into overtime. I mean, let's be honest here. Three on three, when you have Ovechkin and all that group over there, is going to be very, very difficult to beat. The good thing is you don't have that kind of matchup when the playoffs happen. You know, you have full strength five on five. So it's it's one of those things regular season where if you don't match up effectively with another team, it is what it is. One, one, the other thing that we've seen that's been such a breath of fresh air and a pleasant surprise is how great the Bruins have been in overtime and in the shootout don't we have three wins or two wins so far this season in shootouts three i think it's three and that's something that's been the achilles heel for them for years um it's been much better with cassidy as coach with claude julian i mean it was a disaster they couldn't do one damn thing so the changes that have happened from there have been um things that really have made a lot of uh, the biggest difference biggest difference so I, I like the direction I just want them to continue uh, going on the direction that they're at um, Phil's not here but I did want to talk about and bash huh, the Boston Celtics because um, uh, Phil I am I have now officially made up my mind um, I'm done with Brad Stevens I'm done I'm yeah, done. I mean, you got I'm a done. case. You got a case for it. I mean, he yep. broke your heart. He broke all of our hearts. I'm done. I was, I was waiting for, I was waiting at the restaurant. And he's like, yeah, I'll be there in five. I'm like, oh, cool. So and he then blew it just, you up too, huh? <laughs> no, he blew me. And you know what, man? And I was thinking about this, and I was going to come at you with the, yeah, they, their defense. Just, I don't know what you watched lately, or if you just saw highlights or whatever. I've seen, I've seen a decent amount. Yeah. Not that enough, I want to, to, to wait up to one o'clock in the morning <laughs> to watch them, but. Um, well, Brad, I think Brad Stevens deserves every ounce of criticism. I don't know why he's not sure. getting enough of it. And Danny Ainge. Danny overrated Ainge as the general manager. This is your crew that you brought in this offseason, and it's been nothing short of embarrassing and unacceptable play. I'll give him Tristan Thompson is coming around a little bit. I think embarrassing is, is kind Their of stretching bench it. is a mess. They have no bench. These glorified people that they think are superstars – and they haven't won damn crap yet. It's it's absurd. Now, all that aside, I do agree that the bench is a little bit of a mess. And I think Jeff Teague, who we all thought would be a bigger impact, and in the preseason yep. had a had a good uh, start to the preseason, and even the regular season, he had a, a, a the first couple of games, he was pretty decent, pretty good. Uh, I think he hasn't really come around as best as he nope. could there have been a couple articles actually circulating about the failed experiment of jeff teague and let it be known they are 11 and 9 now and yep. they've been i think four and six since they were seven and three which they were seven and three and then the covid stuff hit and that kind of you know i'm not making excuses for that but i'm just letting you know it's not even just the quality of opponent either yep. it just they just lost like they've lost some close ones like last night or the night before rather uh, they are, uh, yeah, I think it was Wednesday night. They lost to Sacramento by like four or five, which a game they, they really should have won. Sacramento isn't a horrible team. They actually have a lot of good young players and are pretty quick and actually do a great job of 
they do a great job of uh, their guard Fox does a great job of penetrating into, you know, the paint and then they kick it back out and they have a, a lot of good, like Bagley is a big guy who can shoot threes and they have a couple other people who can do too, including Fox, but yep. they, their interior defense, they kind of collapsed and went with uh, someone getting to the paint and just like, you know, I, they weren't recovering as well as they could have. And they gave up leads and it seems like, it seems that they don't, they play down to their opponents. I know we talk about this in, in sports all the time and it might be just a cliche, but this seems to be uh, the staple of this year and maybe other times with the, in the Brad Steven, Stevens era. Well, that's not true. I mean, he actually, his first like five years, it was four, four, like three to four years. It was a lot of players playing, uh, playing the game, just really playing tough. And maybe it's part of the players and maybe they're buying into a system. I don't know. I don't know what the equation was to get them there, but they need to get back. Uh, and it's not, it's not doom and gloom, but, and it's still only like 20, uh, yeah, just under 20 games into the season, like 19 games. Oh no, 20. Exactly. I'm sorry. 11 and nine, but they're kind of buoying a bit right now. And I think they're a lot better than their records suggest. They're only three and a half games out. Yeah, they uh, are first in the direct. Atlantic. I'll give you that. Yeah, no, they're a lot better than, and I think, I, I still say like, see what happens. But yeah, they need to they need to kind of figure out who they are a little better. Let's, they'll get annihilated at this West Coast thing if they don't turn it around a little bit. They got a I nice just, win yeah. against Golden State. Yeah. There was some things they in the game that that, uh, that that were hit or miss. They got some luck. You know, they yeah. needed that, which was good. I know Marcus Smart's injury. You know he's out for a couple yeah. of, a couple weeks. That hurts. which is I get that it. sucks. It really does. It really I does. I get it. It takes another person off. Now you got to put the uh, the mass unit together and put, and make it work. Um, I just Brad Stevens to me. He's been there since 2013. Here he's almost coming up on 10 years. You know I know it's like year Crazy, eight or something yeah. like that. But it's not been. A, it's not enough. It's not enough. He's not a winning coach. And, you know, Doc Rivers had Paul Pierce and Garnett and Ray Allen probably should have had 2010 as well as a championship, but you know, it is what it is. Well, not even. This, oh, sorry. That's a whole nother thing. Go, go, go ahead. No, 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 no. It, it, well, it's a whole nother thing because I think you could have had three. I mean, they were actually on, on point. If I don't know if you remember, but 2000, like eight, nine, because 2007, 2008, I believe was it was the, the year. Garnett got hurt in 20, 2000. Yeah, yeah. 2008, eight. like, I think it was, like, right before. No, it, it was, like, 2008, 2009 year. He blew out his knee. I forget if it was, like, in January or February. But, and they were, and they were, they started the season, like, 22 and 2. Yeah. They and they were. were dominating. They were rolling. And that was the year they also brought in Shaq, which was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, and he was great. That was when Shaq was doing the retirement tour, pretty much. That was and, fun. Uh, that was a fun yeah. group. But yeah, they uh, they could have easily won that, and you know, yeah, 2010 was another one. But yeah, that they could have had the a, Lakers, a, and they blew that 10 point lead or 11 point lead that they had in the fourth quarter. Uh, I don't know if it was in the fourth. It was in the first. They came out with a big lead. Going was that what the, maybe something? I remember watching Game Seven at my buddy's house at that time, and I just said, I don't have a good feeling about this. And I was <laughs> So. No, you were asking. Well, I mean, you know what? It was one of the best you game times I've ever seen. Back. No. Well, no, it was a great game. And that was one of Kobe's greatest games. Not to get yeah. too off topic, but he had 17 rebounds. Like, no matter what he did, score wise, he had 17 rebounds. And that's kind of insane. Impressive. I do remember yeah. that. But, but yeah, uh, to Brad Mr. Stevens. Mr. Vanilla, I, I've had enough. He needs a little bit of caramel sauce or. Uh, sprinkles on them or or something to jazz up yeah. whatever the hell is going on with this something group. in his coffee yeah. he is very vanilla he doesn't he doesn't scream to me oh i want to play for brad stevens you know not not because i, I, love, are there, I love to be House fair Brown. are there any are there any coaches House besides House kid, but he reminds me of danny tanner he yeah danny tanner. Me of. uh but i mean to be fair and not to not to get away from important because i don't disagree with the basis of it but I mean, I don't think any player is like, oh, I want to play with that coach. Uh, Doc Rivers. They want a Doc. I, I don't – I think they want to – I don't think any – I don't think anyone's going to Philly Belichick. to play. I don't, I don't think that. anyone's going. Um, a lot of the players, I will definitely give Alex – No, I, I, I think they want to play – I think in the NBA players, they want to play with other players. Players want to play for Alex Cora. That's, that's very clear, especially after last season without Cora there. I guarantee you, you mark my words right here, 
that you will see a, a completely different player out of Raphael Devers this upcoming season. Yeah. Well, Alex no, Bogart. he, uh, he's, uh, I mean, that he wears the pridefully there, the impact there. Maybe it's just a baseball thing. I don't know, but Alex Cora can get players to run through a wall for him. So that's well, when you know you have a great coach. And I don't see that from the Celtics. I don't. No, and I, but I, I also like the only other coach in league, and I don't think Doc Rivers is that example of people flocking to him. I think they got him because they got him. And if that were the case, and L, the Clippers would have won one or two, more people would have want to go to the Clippers. And the Clippers early were days, a good team. Doc, early days, not, now I, I, it might be different. I think Doc is a good coach, and I don't think, I just don't think the NBA is not that place where people go, I want to play for that coach. I mean, besides no, Greg no. Popovich back in the day, but even then, they wanted to play with Tim Duncan. And all those guys there. I, I agree on what? that, Phil. It's a different animal with the NBA when it comes. Or Phil Jackson. Was that your, yeah, your I was about to say Phil Jackson. How about on the Bruins? No, that might be the exception of the rules. Do you think the players but... much prefer playing for Cassidy than Julian? Oh, absolutely. I do, too. Espe- especially yeah. the offensive ones. Yep. Yeah. But that, possible, that, well, possible, I don't miss Claude Julian at all. I mean, we've talked about that for a long time. Pasternak would have been Pasternak would have been out after two seasons with the Bruins if oh, Pasternak would have been coming. traded. He would have been traded because they don't believe in offense. Don't believe. don't put him in on the power play. That's oh, what would oh. be. Yeah, goals are bad. Goals yeah. are bad. Uh, uh, well, Char, no, but... Char would have Char would have stayed with the Bruins and it would have been a whole. Yeah. Tory Krug still would have been gone. He would have been gone earlier though. Yep. Yeah, McAvoy well, would have was... never been drafted. Um, going. Let's go to the Super Bowl end. So we already yeah. talked about what. Uh, what, what our expectations are for everything, but do we have a score and a potential thought on who the MVP will be? I, uh, I was, th- I was thinking, I was talking to a buddy of mine last night about it. And I, my rhyme or reason wasn't, I didn't really, it was more or less a feeling of 24, 21 Tampa Bay. And it was more or less, I can see, and he actually brought up a good point to me. He's like, you know, the chiefs famously, and a lot of people have been saying this, the chiefs famously in games like these are just in general in the playoffs. You see them start slow or just kind of flub it a bit. And if they start slow enough and the Tampa Bay like capitalizes and then it's close enough in the fourth quarter. And then let's say like, what was it? Uh, Kansas city goes up like 21, 17. And then it's two minutes to go and Brady's got the ball. Yep. It's like, then you'll see what happens. And I think actually the MVP could be um, what's his name? Uh, former Jag running back. Leonard, Leonard Fournette. Fournette. Leonard Fournette. Leonette. Leonette. Yeah. My kid said that name yesterday in our class. And I said, you know what? I love that 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 move there because, I mean, you need an effective run game against the Chiefs. I mean, let's be honest yeah. here. And I thought for Nets last game, which was against uh, the Packers, I thought that was an, a, an awesome route running game for him. So I think that confidence-wise and handing the ball off and knowing what he's doing, I could see that absolutely being the case and making a case for him being the MVP. Um, I was actually going to say Leonard Fournette too. Thanks a lot, Phil. Um, hey, but my, cut from the my, same cloth from hockey to football. That's, <laughs> that's all about. That's my only um, gag. I'm sorry. But my my second my second option, I guess, would be Scotty Miller. I think Scotty Miller is going to have a big game. Um, I love that move too. Um, and I think I think the game I think the game is going to be very similar to the Green Bay game. I think the I think Tampa is going to start out very hot go into halftime, come out, and it's just going to fall apart, and they're still going to find a way to end up winning at the end of the night. You think uh, You think Peter Griffin's going to uh, do the same thing with, with the freaking uh, fourth and, uh, oh, let's go kick it. Let's put Brady back in the field. I would not be shocked. I mean, he he's he's the worst time management coach in NFL history. So, I mean. Oh, yeah, I mean, I was Andy Reid gets bailed up by a really good quarterback. And the Andy Reid isn't a horrible coach. That's the thing. And he's, you know, uh, no, he, he isn't. Uh, what do you, come on. He, he went to four straight NFC championships with Donovan McNabb and went to a I Super have more Bowl. faith in a, in a uh, food buffet for him than I do as him as a football. I mean, that, I mean, those two are both <laughs> real. Like he could be, he's amazing at eating uh-huh. and he's amazing at, you know, he, listen, he didn't get over the hump, but yeah, I think, I, I think Tom's right. I think there's a certain magic that's following Tampa Bay. Like whether you believe in that sort of mumble jumble or not, and it's Tom Brady, as well as think, and he of course he's he's beatable. He's lost before, but you know. Well, I, I mean, know. I was watching I was watching the Green Bay game, and it's like okay, it's four or whatever, two minutes left or whatever, 
They kicked the field goal. I was like, there's no shot. Green Bay gets the ball back with enough time to score a touchdown. I was like, even if they do, Brady's going to drive the ball down the field like he always does in the last minute and end up winning the game. Um, but, yeah, I don't I don't so see. So you like Scotty Miller as your choice. Bill likes Leonard Fournette. I like Scotty Miller. That's a good one. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. No, be Brad he could easily Stevens. have two I'm gonna TDs. Be Brad Stevens on my selection. You all know who I'm going to select. <laughs> um, I'm going to select Brady. I'm, why? Why mess with it? Yeah. Hey, I'm you gonna... joke, but Brad Stevens could go in there. He runs the, the forty. Pretty. He's a quick guy. Well, he needs to show it more with his team than on the Celtics. Then I don't know. Um, that's just my thought. I think that Brady's Brady is on a mission right now to prove specifically, I mean, he's, he's got Belichick right there. And he's, he's just probably looking at that football and saying, you son of a bitch. And I think that he's not going to allow himself to lose this game. I think he's got a lot of momentum. I think he got a, has a lot of, like he always says, laser focus. I think this is probably one of his most focused ever Super Bowls he'll go to because he wants to prove that it wasn't the Patriot system that won all those Super Bowls from everything. He also well, they were, wants to prove that it's not Bill either. It's not, they were, not because of Bill. It's because of Tom. They were talking about um, talking about it at the, on, during the Green Bay game, how Arians just lets Brady coach the offense, runs the plays, calls the plays. The, uh, he's basically just the offensive coordinator and making the plays. So, I mean – Clearly, it's, it, it, it wasn't all Belichick, but it was because of Belichick that Brady couldn't really, I guess, show his true potential. Yeah, no, I, I completely side with that. Completely do. So uh, the best is yet to see what this Super Bowl looked like. I'm just glad that I'll get a chance to actually watch it this year. Um, last year, I didn't give a hill of beans about Kansas City and uh, the 49ers. I just did not care whatsoever, so... I actually looks. I, I, I am looking forward to it instead of uh, just using it as another football game to watch. So if it's not the Patriots, why not root for Brady and the rest of the crew? Um, anybody else have anything else they want to add before we wrap up the lovely show? Um, I mean, well, just one other thing about the Bruins is my only concern is a little bit of the goaltending because you're seeing them give up pretty – fairly easy goals. Um, I think, uh, I think Halak needs to play a little more often. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know what the solution could. I would be be. surprised if we don't see uh, Halak on the Friday night. I, I would be too. Uh, I was a little worried about Raz coming, starting the next game after uh, tweaking something. Yeah, but I was able still, to come I was back. Surprised he was back there, but it was good to see him back on the. I remember race. too, this is a contract year, so Tuca probably wants to show people that he's durable and he's going to be right up there for Vesna uh, consideration again. I mean, so far so good. Knock on wood. Yeah, so far so good. I completely so. agree on that end. So go Bruins. Uh, we'll see what happens with the Celtics. Uh, any news on the Red Sox? We'll let you know. Uh, Dustin Pedroia did announce his retirement this week after five years. Couldn't he stay for that? another five? Oh. Should he should have retired five years ago? But you know, better late than never. It was all about the money. It's all about the money. Well, that and he and enjoys the game. People, people have come out and said how much they. Let, let, I, I was a big Pedroia fan, but ever since that whole incident with Machado and everything. I lost a lot of respect to Dustin Pedroia. He, became, he was a favorite that got knocked right, uh, right down. His number does not deserve to be retired either. No, no. He's not a Hall of Famer. He was a very good second baseman. That's it. Very good. Matt Barnes, Matt Barnes' number is going to be retired, though. You will see us next time here without Tom Smith on <laughs> Face the Facts, and we will see you all again real soon. It's been fun, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.